Let me okay. know when you're going to start. Okay. We've started. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to um I've got cancer, so what? I know sometimes people will say, Why did you come up with that name? Um, are you aren't you being sensitive? <laughs> But yes, um, the idea is that we find joy in whatever that comes to us, that makes us human. So yes, I've got cancer and so what? Um, I should live, I should breathe, I should love, I should um, go about my business. I should have find another job, get that degree I want, because once you focus on the future, everything seems easier. But when you feel like, oh, cancer is going to take a hold of me, um, you start thinking about cancer, but when there is, um, like you are telling cancer, so what? And then you are moving. It makes it easier to go through the journey. And um, I, I'm sure you are prepared to learn so much about healthy living. I, I don't know, since we had the last session, I've been super, super, super excited. And I've done so many things, really. And starting with that, um, I had someone come and, um, like, planted uh, uh, what 11 different um, green leaves around the house. Um, there's no excuse for you not to live a, um, a healthy life. Uh, even though you do not have spaces in your house, you can just use bags, pots, everything to plant. You know, just based on some of the things that we discussed last week, um, we still need to find a way to live a healthy life. And today is our 11th episode, and I'm super, super glad. We started this, I think, November, and this is see where we are today, 11th episode, and we are still with Miss um, Sogonna Hennes. And today we are going to summarize um, and just to share some of the things that um, we couldn't get through last week. There are lots of things to share, but because of time, we are taking it one step at a time. So before I bring on board, let me just share a little bit of who we are. Um, this show is brought to you by Flourish Cancer Wellbeing Initiative. Um, it's just something that came to my mind when I was diagnosed with cancer 2021. And I said to myself, I'm not going to go through this journey alone. I'm going to drag other people. And the most important part of dragging people is to get people to talk about cancer. There's uh, so much about secrecy. I don't want to talk about it. They are going to stigmatize against me, this one and that one. And people die um, because they are not sharing. By the time they come up to say, oh, I'm going through this, it has gotten to the, to the very, very late stages. So we are here to share about cancer. We are not calling it the C name, we are calling cancer. It's what it is, it's an ill health. It's, there is no witches and wizards around here. All we are saying is that that's um, a health issue and sometimes caused by some of the things that we eat, our exposure and lifestyle. And then some of them are it's still like things that we came up uh, with our blood and everything. But most importantly is that if you're able to change your diet, talk about cancer, it makes it easier for you to go through this journey. People talk about stigma. For me, I've never felt stigmatized from where one, because everywhere my story is online, Facebook, internet. So before you even say anything, you already know I have cancer. You will even be giving me money because there is nothing to stigmatize against. We'll talk about it, we'll laugh about it. And I live my life, go to work and do some other things. So that's what I want cancer warriors and survivors to be doing. There's no need to hide. Come out, talk about cancer. It's easier discussed than just bearing it in mind. Um, we have this show every second and third Thursday of the month. And it's really, really important that people come out to share. We bring in warriors, um, cancer warriors, those going through the cancer journey. And those who have survived, we bring in doctors um, and every other person who wants to come out to share. Currently, we have a list of people who in the next two, three months, we are fully booked for people to come and share their cancer journey and give us idea of what has really helped them. And from that, we know that people had survived cancer, like lots of survivors out there, but maybe they are looking for a platform to share their story. And the platform is here. 
um, 20 years, 30 years survivors, they are everywhere. And we just need to keep talking about people who survived cancer. It helps um, people to know that, okay, I can go through this journey and still uh, breathe. So this evening, we are back with the concluding part of Back to Roots series. And we have been sharing the topic, preventing healing and surviving cancer. And I'll add chronic disease because it's not just about cancer, every kind of disease. Um, once you can get it, you can reverse it. So if those things that you need to do to be able to revise or to be able to like just um, find a way to live a healthier life, that's what we are discussing today. We touched a little bit on food last week. And if you were not here last week, please, um, the team will drop the link in the chat. You can go and watch the video on YouTube. We posted it on our page on YouTube. And we are an NGO. We need all your support. Please come and join us um, to just share more about cancer and bring awareness. The most important is that we are getting people to talk. And if you want to share your story, um, maybe the story, your personal story, or you have other people that you want them to come and share, or you know anyone, or you even want to talk about as a caregiver, what were your experiences? What did you do? How did you come about the, some of the things that you did during um, a, a patient's um, cancer journey? Please come and share. Um, we are all here to learn. There's so much to learn about cancer. Even the doctors do not really, really, really um, know so much. So we are all finding a way to get through to this cancer. Once again, my name is Flourishing Flora, and I am the founder of Flourish um, Cancer Wellbeing Initiative. And like I said, today is the 11th episode of I've Got Cancer. So what? And I am going to um, turn on to our guest. Um, she was here last week, like I mentioned, and she sat there somewhere. So please join us. If you have your questions, share in the chat. Uh, we are going to take it one after the other, um, just to make sure that we are getting through to everybody. And if you allow you to speak, please make it a little bit shorter so that other people can have opportunity to share. Once again, welcome everybody. And over to you, Mrs. Ogana. How are you today? I am doing very well, very well. I'm doing well. A little allergy season in uh, Atlanta, but doing well. Thank you for having me. And hi to everyone who has joined. Um, uh, huh, there's so much to talk about. Uh, like last week, we talked about food, uh, going back to our roots. And that's what this is about. What are we going to do? Like I said before, um, my program is not just for cancer because the principles are the same. If you change your lifestyle, if you change your diet, if you exercise, if you detoxify, everything, if you do all these things, it will help anybody with chronic disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, uh, preventing stroke, uh, heart attacks, all those things, all the high cholesterol. Once you do these things, it will help with everything. But we are zeroed in on cancer because it's the most scary disease anybody can think of now. And it's getting worse by the day. Like we said last week, some of these things we never heard before. I grew up in Africa and I'm proud and happy that I did because I learned a lot. I learned how our ancestors, our great grandparents lived to be 100 years old and more. And without going to doctors, and most of them had their teeth in their mouth. They, they never went to dentists. They were doing something right. And that's what we have to go back to, living the way that our grandparents lived. I talked about if you can't pluck it, if you can't dig it up, if you can't gather it, then you shouldn't be eating it. And if he has so many names behind it, labels, your food shouldn't have labels. If he has labels and you can't read them, you shouldn't be eating them. So we are saying that because cancer is so much now, they're saying that it's like 200% increase. And they're saying by 2030, right now it's one out of every three. By 2030, it will be one out of every two people, 50% of people will have cancer. So today we talked about, last week we talked about food as medicine. If your food, if what you're eating is not medicine, then you're eating the wrong food. Your food should be your medicine. Eating mostly food that has not been processed. Food 
like our great grandfather. What you are eating, ask yourself, will your great grandfather recognize it? If not, you shouldn't be eating it. So today we're gonna to talk about, we have seven steps that I take my clients through to heal and reverse cancer and other diseases. And today, the next step we're gonna talk about is stress management. Because many people don't know that stress is causing us a lot of trouble. They call stress the number one killer. They call it the number one killer because it's a silent killer. Your body might be going through stress and you won't even know until, you know, that's why people slump. They say that somebody was at a gas station and they slumped or he was going to the bathroom and they slumped because their body has been going through so much stress and they didn't know it. And it was damaging their body one way or the other. So no more stress. God made our body to survive stress. He put a mechanism in our body called the flight and uh, fight or flight uh, uh, syndrome. So it's God put it there so that if you go through stress, your body can go through the stress and recover and you are fine. And that is called acute stress. So acute stress is like you are walking in the bushes and you see a lion. Immediately you see the lion. God put stuff in your, in your, in your system that will help you either fight that lion or run away from the lion. And that's beautiful. So when that happens, your adrenal glands, immediately you see the danger. It can be any kind of danger. The adrenal glands will kick in and it will flood your body with cortisol adrenaline so that your body will now <clears throat> excuse me, have enough energy enough muscle enough enough energy and enough fuel to take off and run and you run you see when you have acute stress it has a beginning and it has an end you know that when you see that lion within a minute you run away from it or a, a wild dog or something now in a minute it will be over and that's the good thing about acute stress it starts and it stops. At that period, when that adrenaline kicks in, you cortisol will pump sugar into your blood, pump a lot of sugar so that you have fuel, you have energy to run. I, but the problem is acute stress is good for survival. What happened to the other kind of stress, the chronic stress? That is where we get in trouble. Acute stress is supposed to start and stop. Like for example, I'll tell a story. In Canada, we have a house in the city and we have a house where my husband is right now, in the village, in the boondocks, I call it. Inside the village, it's like, talk about village. Now, so we have wild animals there. So one day I was walking with him. We live on a, on a beach, on a, on a lake, as I was walking and there was a bear, a bear that could kill us right there. Immediately I saw that bear. Oh my God, my blood, I think my heart started to race. My blood, I, I, I almost passed out. You see, the adrenaline kicked in. I think I had too much of it because I, I was almost frozen there. And he said, my heart was beating. I thought I was going to pass out. The blood in my brain drained. I was dizzy. And he said, walk. Right? I said, keep walking. So the, 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 the bear was like 10 feet away. If that thing comes to us, it can kill us. So we started walking away from it. And then I sat down. I, I, I told him, go get a car. I can't do this anymore. Go get a car and pick me up. The house is very close, but I couldn't go to the house because of the adrenaline and the rush. That is acute stress. And that is how God made it so that I could walk, run away from that animal. But what we are dealing with is what is called chronic stress. And that's where the problem is. Chronic stress is when you are constantly stressed, okay? Your body remains in everlasting state of heightened alertness. Your body is always like, what's going to happen? What, what am I going to do? Our body is not meant to live like that. We are not meant to live in chronic stress. We are not meant to be stressed all the time. It's a persistent stress that we go through every day. Somebody asks, what would that be? For example, diagnosis. Just your diagnosis of having cancer, that causes stress to the body. The fear. Somebody said it's like a lion that is following you that will never, you will never escape. Your body is going through that. Imagine if 
that kind of shock I had, that kind of dunking of cortisol that came on me when I saw the bed. Imagine if my body has to go through that the whole day. I would die. We are not meant to live in constant state of stress like that. So people ask, how does this stress show up? We have to, listen, we have had stories from doctors that we work with. Dr. Forsyth, he told us that this is one of the best, highest oncologists in the world. This man said that all the patients he has been treated, he found out that most of them had some stressful events happen to them in the past five, three to five years or one to five years. Stress can induce cancer cells that are dormant. That's why we have to deal with the stress. You might not heal until you address the stress and the toxic emotion in our lives. We have to deal with stress. Yes, how does this stress show up? Stress can come from negative thoughts. Oh my God, am I dying? Fear, what's gonna happen to my children? Anger, you might be angry. Bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. Wow, that's a big one. I teach so much about unforgiveness. Jealousy, guilt, shame, insecurity. So many things can bring on stress, anxiety. But the whole thing is all these negative emotions, they cause stress first in our mind and then our body start to react to stress. All this pain, all this disappointment. You know, many people had uh, cancer because they don't even know it. Like my mother, my father, they were so in love with each other, each other. And my father dropped dead suddenly. And my mother couldn't cope with it. Few years after that, she got cancer. She was diagnosed with cancer. And we know many people who have, you know, when I have a client, the first thing I ask them, tell me about the stress in your life. Tell me how you are dealing with the stress. Because if we want to stop cancer from coming back, from coming back, we must deal with the stress. So what happens when you are faced with stress every day? That's what is not good. Because when you are stressed, your body is trying to help. And it dumps that cortisol. It dumps that adrenaline in your body. And guess what cortisol does? Cortisol pumps up sugar. Remember, I said, God made it so that your body will dump sugar, so that your muscles will have fuel to fight or run from acute stress. But the problem is our body doesn't know better. It keeps dumping this sugar that we know that causes inflammation, right? I talked about inflammation. When you have too much sugar in your blood because of the cortisol, because of the chronic stress you are going through every day, your body is inflamed. Cortisol will cause inflammation. And inflammation, I call it a vicious cycle. Inflammation will damage your cells and cancer can take off. Or autoimmune disease or high blood pressure or anything else can take off. You know what? It is said that we can't control. We cannot control what happens in our lives, right? We can't. But yes. we can control how we respond to them. Things happen in our lives. There's, nothing is perfect. Things will happen. We can't control that. But we can control how we respond. If somebody said something bad to you, somebody cursed you out and told you you are no good, you can either you know, go pray for him or you can get upset and get wired up and, you know, get your, your cortisol running and get your body all messed up. So we cannot control what happens, but we can control how we deal with stress. So I'm going to talk about the damages that stress will cause to your body. We have to know this thing so that next time you are stressing, you start to pull this thing back. Try to do stuff, and I'll tell you what you can do to help yourself. Stress, like I said, the adrenal glands will get you ready to fight or flight, and it will pump all those cortisol. And guess what it does? This adrenal gland, to be able to do this day in, day out, it will start to take the nutrients, the nutrients your body needs to heal from cancer. Because of all the stress, these adrenal glands will take vitamin C. And vitamin C is a big deal for cancer. Anybody who has cancer must have abundance of vitamin C because vitamin C can even stop cancer from growing. So this stress will cause the, the adrenal gland will go and start taking the vitamin C from your body. And guess what? Other, body, other organs in your body will not have any 
any nutrients. It's taking nutrients from you. And then what happens? Your immune system, that's stress. The number one thing stress will do is to suppress your immune system. And guys, we know that immune system is our, is our warrior. It's our defense. It's the first thing that protects us from cancer. Remember I said last time that everybody have cancer, dormant cancer cell, precancerous cells in their body, everybody. But it doesn't happen because your immune system, Jesus, the immune system goes and kills when that cancer comes up or anything comes up, the immune system will suppress it. So when you are stressed, the immune system gets suppressed. That is terrible. Then, then that means your defense is not there. That means any cancer can come up. Even the one that has gone, God forbid, can ignite again. That's why we need to take care of stress. It steals the nutrients from us. It slows that gastric secretion. You know, when you have stress, you, like me, sometimes when I'm stressed out, I'm running to the bathroom, right? You're having diarrhea, quick diarrhea, because that's what stress does. It, 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 it slows down the secretion in your gastric uh, uh, intestines and all that. And that's why people have, and it does stop you from absorbing food. So when you are stressed out, if you eat, you can rush to the bathroom. It can cause acid reflux. It can cause ulcer. It can cause IBS, inflammatory bowel disease. Stress can cause all these things. Mine is like I run to the bathroom, I have diarrhea when I'm stressed, and many people do that. So we know that cortisol, do you, you, know, you know the one that frightens me? The same cortisol that this stress produces, you know what it does? It tells your immune system to stop pro producing white blood cells. And if you know anything, if you've done chemo, you know they're always checking your white blood cell. If it's too low, they will stop chemo, right? This yes. stress, this cortisol will go and suppress your white blood cells and tell your immune system, stop producing white blood cells. And that exposes you to any manner of disease. It exposes you to anything. A simple cough can make you sick. So that's the reason why we don't need this stress. We have to fight, we have to do everything. And another thing is, you see people when they get to be 50, 60, especially men, they start having this stomach. Their stomach starts to get bigger. It's called visceral fat. And that is because of stress sometimes and insulin uh, uh, problems. And that is why cortisol, that's what cortisol does. And it's very, very dangerous. This visceral fat, this fat on your organs, when it's on your stomach, my dear, it is on your heart, it's on your liver, all this fat. And guess what? That fat is one of the most dangerous things you can have. That big stomach hmm. is really dangerous. That's how people, when I see somebody with big stomach, I tell them right away, we have to work on your insulin resistant because that visceral fat, we call it, causes inflammation. And you know the system, inflammation damages your DNA. And that's how cancer and other diseases will start. So it's very dangerous. We have to get rid of that visceral fat. When cortisol is high, this cortisol is a bad guy. When it is high, why is it high? Because of stress. When it's high, that's when people eat more. Because when the cortisol is high, brillin is your uh, uh, hunger hormone that tells you stop eating. You are good now. When that cortisol, when that stupid cortisol is high, that brain goes low. And all you do is eat, eat, eat. Do you remember that people who are depressed, they, stay, they call it uh, uh, emotional eating. When they are sad, they yes, go, yes. go to the fridge, they grab the ice cream, they grab. That's because the cortisol has suppressed their hunger hormone. And cortisol, you know, when you are not sleeping, when you are stressed, some people don't sleep. And we talk about sleep real quick. So all these things are woven together. I talk about cortisol a, a, a lot because cortisol will cause inflammation. Remember, guys, inflammation leads to cancer, leads to heart disease, leads to heart attack, leads to a stroke, leads to all these things. Chronic inflammation is a precancerous state. When you have constant chronic inflammation, you are exposing yourself to having cancer. Last thing I will say here is obesity. Obesity, being fat, being big, 
now the second leading cause of cancer, apart from cigarette smoking. Think about it. So we need to get that weight off of our bodies. I, I, can't, I don't have time to get into that, why that happens, because that fat stores all the toxins, it stores a lot of stuff. And when it begins to release it in the body, trouble happens. So obesity now is known as the second leading cause of cancer. And that's what I'm talking about. This stupid uh, uh, cortisol and adrenaline will pour in these things into your body. It will cost you insulin. It's so dangerous. It will cost you insulin to stop working. Then you are packing up weight on your stomach, on your butt, everywhere. Excuse me, let me take a, a, a glass of water. So you ask me, how do we stop this? I call it the biohack. Our goal, our first goal is to bring in happy hormones. God gave us hormones that, that were supposed to protect us now. It's going out of whack because of stress. Also, God gave us happy hormones to counteract that bad guys. And those happy hormones, we call them serotonin. You guys know about it. Dopamine, endorphins. Do you know that the one that called endorphin is like a pain reliever? If you have a lot of it in your body, if you have cancer and you are in pain, it can slow down the pain. It can even stop the pain. And we have what's called oxytocin. Oxytocin, I call it the love, the love hormones. And this, you can get this, and these are possible, and we're going to talk about it real quick. So I'm going to be rushing through this. So what I'm saying, if you want to heal and stay healed, you got to cut down on this cortisol. You gotta get yourself to a happy and content, relaxed state. I call it the Zen. Zen, you have to do that. How do we do that is the question. Because I have to do that every day. I have to, because I, I live a stressful life sometimes and I have to do this every day. The first thing I'll tell you about is there are things that are free, you don't have to pay for. Number one, laughing, laughing. When was the last time you laughed so much that tears were coming down your face. When was the last time women that sometimes I laugh so much, <laughs> I have to run to the bathroom or else I'll pee on myself. They did their research. And again, let me say something here because people think I'm wasting my time. Listen, everything I'm telling you is science backed, evidence based. I tell people the same program I'm running is what the former president of the United States, Bill Clinton, is using today to keep himself healthy. So this is not a joke, this is something serious. So they did a study, they did a research in Europe, and they took people who were, took some great for people, and they took their blood, they drew their blood, and they checked the blood for these happy hormones, this serotonin, you know, this uh, dopamine, this endorphins, they checked them, and the level was, yeah, you know, it was there, it was okay. And uh, then they put a, Stand up comedy, stand up comedy. Please don't, don't look down on this. This is powerful. You Nigerians, I go online on YouTube, I'm looking for Nigerian comedies and I laugh. It's free. Go on YouTube and find the uh, stand up comedians. They have church, uh, uh, basket mouth. There's one that I watch, they call basket mouth. Anything that will make you laugh. When you start laughing, God will bring in all this serotonin all this uh, dopamine, all these endorphins, and guess what it does? Guys, guess what it does? It stops the inflammation. It cools down that inflammation. It jacks up, it brings up your immune system so that your immune system will start to fight the cancer. People think this is simple. You know that when they took the blood of these people and they let them watch stand-up comedy for one hour, you know what? I tell my clients that they have to watch stand-up comedy every day for one hour. Take time. You know what I do? I do it every day. When I'm in the kitchen, I take my phone and I put my, my comedy there when I'm, I'm cooking or when I'm in the bathroom and I'm watching my comedy. You know, you know what this does? It stops cortisol. It makes your immune system strong. I tell people about the immune system. Do you know that cancer, covers itself, the cancer cell. The most wicked thing I've ever seen in my life is a cancer cell. When I studied cancer, I said, this is beyond demonic. This thing is evil. Do you know that this thing will cover itself with protein? 
because your immune system will be walking around looking for the bad guys to kill the bad guys when it sees a cancer cell do you know what the cancer cell does it covers itself with protein so the immune system will say oh this is a good guy but inside is the cancer cell so we need to do everything to let that cancer cell expose itself so that our immune system can kill it so they took the blood of these people and they and they get the one hour of uh, stand up comedy right do you know after they took their blood in between and they found out that their serotonin the happy hormones were very high when they were watching this this stand up comedy very high and 12 hours after they took their blood they, uh, 12 hours after they started watching this show they took their blood again and guess what the serot the good hormones were still very high 12 hours after don't look down on these things it saved my life and guess what happened they took another group of people and they put sad movies for them movies that you crying you are depressed and before they did that guess what they did they took their blood just like they did the other people and they saw where their happy hormones were and they let them watch the sad movie and then they took their blood again guess what happened all the happy hormones went down cortisol went up all the bad guys went up the good guys depressed so at that point you are exposed to your immune system being depressed not doing his job so sad movies were able to depress the immune system imagine that people look down on this so how number one thing i tell people start watching things that make you laugh and stop watching things that make you sad because when you are doing that in fact they showed us a story of people who have cancer and they gave them lots and lots of happy happy comedy to watch and good food do you know most of them their cancer suppressed just by doing these things in fact the bible said in proverbs 12 17 22 that a merry heart a merry heart a happy heart do it good like medicine bible said that thousands and thousands of years ago a merry heart do it good like medicine when you are happy it is medicine it is medicine but a broken spirit dry out the bones when your bones are dried that's cancer that's death a broken spirit so we need to be happy we need to make ourselves happy another thing you can do exercise i'm going to talk more about exercise exercise we produce oh thank god for exercise like yesterday yesterday all of a sudden i was sad for no reason you know what i did i went outside and i started running and when I did it, I run a little, I walk a little, I run a little, and joy, that serotonin, that dopamine, oh my God, I was so happy. I'm like, how do people live without moving their body? That's a God sent. So we exercise, go outside and get fresh air. That helps. That helps with sadness. That's helps with anxiety. That helps with depression. And another thing you have to do for stress, man, stress is a killer. Take a break from the stressful situation. What is it that's stressing you? Is it negative people around you? There are negative people around you that are causing you distress. Stay away from them. Is this toxic relationships? Find out, go to counseling, do something. Stay away from it if you can't fix it. Is this a stressful job? Stressful children that are putting you through hell? please stay away from change your job do something to get away from st stress another thing you can do to heal from stress is meditation meditation man years ago when i had meditation i started speaking in talks i said this is the depth i'm not doing this this is the occult occult <laughs> unfortunately i have an ex-husband who was in in harry harama harry krishna all those nonsense and they do meditation so i'm like I, i'm not doing this but i found out that that's not even it's not meant for occultic people it's meant for everybody even christians you can meditate you know <clears throat> when you meditate you have these endorphins you have this uh, uh, serotonin flooding your body i'll talk about meditation you know deep breathing deep breathing 
even if you go to if you go to YouTube and, and Google deep breathing, you see different types you can try. I have some that 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 has saved my life. Even this morning, before I could do anything, I, I had to do that deep breathing. You know, I call it the box breathing. It's easy. You take a deep breath for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, then hold your breath for seven seconds. Breathe it out for eight seconds. You keep doing this over and over and over. Your body will calm down. Even if you can't sleep, do that at night repeatedly. You will fall asleep like a baby. And guess what? It's called neuroplasticity. When you are doing that, it is changing your, your, your mindset. It's changing, healing your body. It's taking away the inflammation that causes cancer. And it's flooding your body with the sweet hormones that you need. Quality of sleep, you have to sleep. You have to sleep seven to nine hours. Good sleep will stop stress. And problem is these things are interwoven. They are hand in hand. If, you, if you're having stress and you can't sleep, guess what happened? So uh, uh, cortisol start flooding again. So without sleeping, we talk about sleep later. So, hey, another thing I talk about is dancing. You know, in the olden days, they used to have villages, used to have their own dancing group. They invite another village to come and teach us how to dance. I remember my sisters, I was too young, but my sister registered in this dancing. Uh, um, I, can, I forgot the names of the dancing group in Nigeria, in Igbo land. Young people, would, if you're having a wedding, you call the dancing people. Those things, in those days, they were the way people were dealing with emotions and, and stress. Join their singing singing they have research showing that singing can bring down can, can bring down cortisol stop inflammation <laughs> the, the, uh, 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 help you heal singing join the choir sing in your house i used to ask my husband he's i can't shut up i sing all the time in the kitchen that's why i have to only marry a christian because i sing christian songs all the time sing they found out that singing can heal your body. You don't need to pay for that. It's a free treatment. Another thing you can do, be with your loved ones. That will help you manage your stress. Green tea, probiotics, will help you with serotonin and all that stuff. Serotonin and the good, feel good hormones. We are talking about all these good feel good, feel good hormones. I don't know if anybody, should, uh, uh, Flora, before I go to anything, the last thing I'll talk about here is forgiveness. Okay. Ah, you have to talk about forgiveness. They said that it's like drinking poison. If you don't forgive, uh, listen, I'm working on it. I'm not telling you I'm perfect though. Every it's, it's a persistent thing. We have to continue. We have to persevere. We have to discipline ourselves when we are talking about this. They said that unforgiveness is like poison. You are drinking this poison, but you are expecting it to kill that person you don't like. But you are the one taking it though. So you can get professional counseling too. You know, some people need professional counseling to deal with uh, their stressful situation if they can't manage it. So that's what I'm saying about stress. That is the number one killer. You know, they found out that when people are stressed out, this cortisol, this inflammation, for example, the inflammation, when it happens in the artery that go into the heart, yeah. Okay, so the inflammation, let me let me show this with you, then I'll, I'll stop. The inflammation, when it's happening inside the arteries that goes to the heart, you know what it does? The inside the, the artery is inflamed, and your body's like, okay, I'm going to fix this. The body will go and get calcium and start to patch up. It's a good job it's doing. But it doesn't know when to stop because your body keeps getting all stressed out and more and more inflammation is happening. And this thing keeps putting, putting a calcium all over the inflamed area. And very soon, the artery that leads to your heart is blocked. And that's what causes heart, heart attacks and some stroke. So it is important that we bring this inflammation through stress under check. Okay, that's that's what I have to. I can't go on because that's all that things I have to talk about. 
Okay, thank you so much. In fact, I've written more than the page. You know, just just and, and as I'm writing, I'm also sending on my status and I'm saying, people, if you are not here, you're missing. Thank you so much for sharing. There are lots of things like I, I don't even know where to start asking the question from, but I'll leave the the floor open. Um, if you have a question, comment, please raise your hand, use the chat um button to raise your hand to just make a comment or ask your questions briefly. Um, but while we are thinking about um, questions and some of the things that we want to um, share with her, I, I just want us to draw a bit on um, this forgiveness thing. Um, because there might be lots of other things that has happened in your life that, okay, you choose to forgive, but then that it doesn't stop there. It's, it's like a cycle every time there's something else happening. How do you um, get to a point where you let things bother you the less? Um, it's not just about forgiveness. I know this person. He's a friend of mine. You can't get him angry. Like, you cannot get him angry. Like, it's... How do you get to a point where you don't get to that point? In fact, one day he said to me that for someone to get me angry, that person must have like who are you like i i just ignore it. And, and it makes him have this less of fair attitude or two things like it doesn't really bother him but some of us like every little things we hold on to it like uh, they did me this one they did this one how do we get to a point where we less worry about things about family about people about what they say and what they did not say because i've read somewhere that it also adds to the stress that we consume every day. Let, let me say something here. There, there's something that I didn't mention here. I call it a mindset mindset shift, right? There are other things you can do, like when you get angry, stop yourself and start taking deep breaths and mm. begin to prophesy over yourself. Because, you know, they call it positive affirmation. I call it prophesying to yourself. Like, go to yourself, go to the mirror and tell yourself, I'm not going to let this person take my joy. And mm. do this breathing. Take deep breaths. Take that deep breath in and out. Tell yourself, stop. And start to speak life to yourself. This person is not worth my, my, my joy. This person is not worth my life. Because what, what are they doing? They are causing you to have loss of cortisol that is destroying your immune system is are they worth it? So speak yeah. to yourself. I do that. I go to the mirror. Yeah. I say, you know what? Especially if you are fearful, if you are angry, if you are mad, speak to yourself. They call it neuroplasticity. If you keep telling yourself positive things, very soon your brain will start to act the same way. Neuroplasticity. When you keep speaking life to yourself. Stop yourself when you're angry and speak life instead of negative. Instead of saying, I am so stressed out today. Say, today is going to be a blessed day. I'm going to have a wonderful day. If you keep conversing positive, science is telling us, you know, we Christians, we prophesy over ourselves, I shall not die, but live. And you keep saying it. Now we know that there's science behind it. If you keep saying it and saying it, your brain will start to act what your mouth is saying. So, like I said before, we cannot control what happens in our life, but we can control how we react to them. So that's what I have to say about that. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and that's where, uh, from where he was coming from, just how do you react to what comes to you? Because you can't even control how people react to you, do things to you, but then how you come about ignoring or even just taking deep breaths and just leaving. Um, if we have any questions or comments, please raise your hand um, or mute yourself. But while we are talking about it, I, I, I want us to share something about relationships and love. And um, I know you talked about loving um, family, uh, love families and all that. One of the issues that um, cancer warrior survivors are facing currently especially the reason why some of them are not coming out because they they are afraid of finding love um they are afraid of 
Um, sometimes you will hear who will marry me, um, who will love me with maybe half breasts or uh, without breasts or whatever. And it takes a toll on their psyche. How do we get to a point where we are good in ourselves, in our body, and allowing love? Because sometimes I will say that maybe we are the one to just join away because we don't want to give in, saying there's something wrong with my body. Please share how um, some of these things can help us breathe, find love, and give ourselves opportunity to be loved. You know, the first thing is to know that cancer is a disease just like diabetes. I know Nigerians, we we spiritualize everything. Everything is demon. Everything, oh, it's an arrow, this and that. First, let's accept that this is a disease just like every, some people have high blood pressure, whatever. Uh, diabetes and all that. So once you accept that, then the fear or the shame will be less, you know? And then we found out, uh, that's another research that said that people who don't have love and affection in their lives, especially in Nigeria is different. America is worse. My neighbor who lives next to me, I haven't seen him, I don't know him, and I've been here for how long, 12 years? So people who don't have family members, who don't have love in their lives, the science has proven that they die faster from cancer than people who have love in their lives. So let's go back to, you know, the family members. You know, first and foremost, don't be ashamed that you have cancer because people have high blood pressure. Are they ashamed of that? They have diabetes, are they ashamed of that? So let, let's walk towards loving ourselves first. You know, speaking that life, when you begin to speak life, prophesy to yourself, positive affirmation, write it down, they call it journaling write down those things that bother you and then for every bad thing that bother you write 10 things that are five things that god has done for you that are good that's journaling so when you are doing this you know you then you feel good in yourself then you're able to find love you no know, reach out to family members go to church join a job a fa a family of god join if you are a muslim go to mosque whatever join that family that will help you beat cancer like I said, they found out that people who don't have family members or love in their lives, they die faster than people who. I don't know if that answered the question that Flora asked. Yes, yes, um, yes, that does. Um, any other question, any comments? Somebody asked a question in our chat and I want to share it here. She says, how can I keep my emotions in check? I am not sure which emotion she's talking about, but she's maybe um, I, I don't know, but she said, how can I keep my emotions in check? Okay, uh, how do you keep your emotions in check? Is by, first of all, knowing that you have that emotion. Yeah, Understanding that you, you are angry, that's an emotion. Unforgiveness, that's an emotion. Envy, all those things I mentioned before, those are emotions. So how do you keep in check? By doing what we just said. Recon first of all, recognize you have that problem and begin to get help for it. Start to sing, start to dance, start to tell yourself stuff. Start to do those steps that we mentioned. Looking at yourself and saying, you know what, I am angry. Write it down, why am I angry? Sometimes when I'm upset, I have to stop and think, what made me upset? Because sometimes I'm upset and I don't know what, 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 what happened. So find out why you're upset, why your emotions are that way, and then start from there write down what happened and then write five or six things that you can do to change that start by loving yourself forgiving yourself where you have gone wrong and forgiving people and then you know what they said also gratitude gratitude mm. that didn't include mm. here every day you have to wake up in the morning and write down three or five things that you are grateful for what are you grateful? Instead of looking at all the bad stuff, and they find out that if you do these things, gratitude, it will change your emotions. Give to people, bless somebody else. Giving, giving helps with anxiety. Giving helps with depression. Giving helps with with all these things we are talking about. When you give to someone, even if you don't have, give a little. You find joy in giving, in blessing somebody else. So those are the things that show gratitude. Bless somebody else. 
Get out of your own mindset. Get out of all your pain. I, I have a pastor who, who said he was in hospital one day. Instead of thinking about the pain he was going through, he started going to pray for other people who were going through pain like him. And he felt better. So go out there. First of all, be grateful because most people are not grateful for what they have. They only look at the bad side. Are you grateful for what God has done that we are still here today? Are you grateful for fight? Sometimes when I pray and I start to praise God for all the things he has done, I thank him for, are you grateful for going to the bathroom? Do you know there are people that can't go to the bathroom? Are you grateful for drinking water because people that, that can't drink? So be grateful and be generous. Give to people. Be a blessing to others and you'll find joy doing that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's uh, uh, mind blowing. Be grateful. Be grateful. What are you grateful for? Be grateful for life. Um, sometimes we hold on to the fact that someone said we have 10 days, 20 days, 30 days to leave. And we are not grateful for that extra day that comes up. There are lots of people who have even lived this life. They, nobody told them about whether they have two days or three days to leave. Something happened, an accident, everything and they, they die. So um, every time that we have, we should be grateful, grateful to God. Okay, so um, just while we wait to, for- I can go, go to ahead. the next one because, uh, you go know, let's, so the next one, like I said, we have the seven pillars of health. We've done the food, we did the, uh, uh, what did we just do? <laughs> the, the stress level, you know, the biohacks. Now we're gonna talk about exercise. Oh, it's a good one. Our body is created, our body is designed to move, okay? If you are a cancer patient, you need to move. I'm not talking about just going to the gym and lifting uh, uh, 5,000 pounds. That's not what I'm, I'm talking about. You have to move your body every day. They actually said you have to do 30 minutes to heal cancer and keep it gone. Because we're not just talking about healing cancer, keeping it gone. You have to move your body. You have to, the best exercise I find out for everybody is walk. Go and walk, just like our forefathers did. They walked to market four times a week. Okay, oh yeah, from what they went to market, they walked. They didn't drive. So exercise, you don't have to be an Olympian. You need to move your body every day. Some people, if you are stand, if you are doing desk work, like at work, Stand up instead of sitting down all day. Stand up and do your work. That is helping the body. Take the stairs sometimes instead of taking the elevator. Go out to the field and walk. 30 minutes a day, do that walking. Do you know there was a research that was done by Harvard University? No, it's the biggest university in, the, in America, it's Harvard. One Dr. Fall Hoffman. He did a research and he found out that regular exercise, listen to this everyone, regular exercise can slow down the blood vessel. You know, like I told you guys, when I studied cancer, I got so angry, so that thing is beyond, it's worse than a demon. Cancer grows its own blood supplies. Can you believe this? If you stop this cancer from eating sugar, it's gonna go use protein and it grows the blood supply to feed itself that's why when you see somebody dying of cancer they are very skinny because cancer will grow so much so much uh, uh, blood vessel that everything you eat they will take it from you so they are showing us by harvard university that exercise we cut down that blood vessel that blood vessel that feeds the cancer cells Exercise will slow the growth of that blood vessel and it's called angiogenesis. That is a miracle that something so simple can help us kill this evil that is growing. So the same exercise has been shown that 40% of people who are going through treatment or who have gone through treatment, that, sorry, 45% of those people who don't exercise, we have a negative outcome with cancer. 45% of people who are going through cancer treatment or who have gone through cancer or whatever, they will have a negative outcome. That means they will not do well. 
So exercise is paramount. You don't have to, you don't have to become an Olympian, just walk. Five step, whatever you have to do. Okay, you do have a bicycle, use the bicycle, you know, the stationary bicycle. Some people have stationary bicycle at home. Whatever exercise you have to do, please do it. Don't, sometimes you don't feel like it, especially if you're going through cancer treatment. You don't feel you're weak, you're tired. Get up and do stretching. You can stretch your body. Even walk around the house. Get every 30 minutes, get out of the chair where you're sitting and walk around. You are saving your own life. They said that about we need about 160 minutes of, uh, of exercise every week. So whatever way you can get it, please get it. Get up and walk. Uh, I, I, you know, go outside, walk around. Like yesterday, like I said, I was feeling down or whatever. And I just went outside and I started walking and running. And, and before I knew, within five minutes, I was having happiness. So that's what you have to do. You go out there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, walk. Some people go to school like a secondary school, primary school, and walk around their field. Make it a, a, a thing that you have to do. And if you are feeling so, so weak that you can't, get up and walk around your house, walk around your neighborhood. And guess what? The 30 minutes, they told us, you, you, if you don't want to do the whole 30 minutes at a time, you can break it down. You can do 15 minutes and go back, and then come out and do 15 minutes again. And if you can do more than 30 minutes, that's even beautiful. Now, let me talk about uh, uh, how exercise can help us, especially if you are going through cancer treatment or you have finished cancer treatment. Exercise will help reduce inflammation. Remember, I've been talking about inflammation. Inflammation is the root cause of diseases, especially when you have gone through uh, uh, cancer treatment. You know, your body is inflamed. So exercise will help slow down that inflammation. Exercise will help support your immune system, especially for people who had cancer, who had gone through treatment. Everybody needs their immune system to be functional. You don't need to do strenuous exercises. You don't need that. Exercise will improve uh, um, your hormones by detoxifying the estrogen and improving your insulin sensitivity. You know, I keep talking about insulin, insulin insulin resistant because we know that that goes hand in hand with uh, cancer and other diseases. So exercise is important. Exercise will improve your mood. We already said that hormones, the serotonin, the dopamine. Every time I go to the gym, I, I come out, I'm like, wow, I'm so happy. Euphoric, you feel euphoria, like, whoa, you're walking on the clouds. So please, anything, exercise will also help our muscles and our bones, especially when we, we went through chemo. It, it helps to reduce pain, it increases your energy, your vitality. It helps with blood circulation, we know that. And guess what, it helps you sleep better. It helps improve your digestion and it helps you manage your weight. We keep talking about weight. I call it a magic portion that makes you feel better, even in your toughest days, even in your saddest days. If you go and exercise, you will feel better. And the key is to start slow. Don't go start lifting weights, start little by little. Then don't stop, keep going, keep building up, keep building up, keep building your strength. And I'll talk about strategies. I talked about standing up at your desk instead of sitting down. Getting up and walking around, the, if you're watching TV every 30 minutes, get up and walk around. Take the elevators, don't take the elevators, then take the stairs. Start slow. You're not running a marathon, we know that. <laughs> and gradually improve your, your, your strength, your workout, your intensity, slowly. Listen to your body. If, you are, if your body is telling you you're overdoing it. In, in, do you know that over-exercising will make you sick? People who overexercise, they are prone to infections because they are, they are pushing their immune system. So, you know, we have to have a balance. That's why I said, go and run, go and walk, whatever you're doing, make sure you're going to, getting your aerobics, aerobics in every day. Um, so stay hydrated. When you are exercising, make sure you are drinking water. See me, I have my lemon water here that I'm drinking. 
keep drinking before, between, after exercise, because staying hydrated will help avoid fatigue and keep your body functioning well. Again, try, I, I get bored quickly. I, I don't know if anybody's like me, I get bored with it. When I go to the gym, I get bored. So try different exercises. Do this one today. Today you might walk. Tomorrow, if you walk in this area, maybe you walk another different area in your street. If you live in town, go this way today. The next day, go the other way so that you, get, you don't get bored. Listen to music, you know, put your headphone and listen to music so you don't get bored. If you can do bicycling, I don't know, all those things, we don't have them in Nigeria, but if you, they have gyms in Nigeria now. So go to the gym, do different exercise every time. If you can't afford it, go and walk outside. You know, we have good weather in Nigeria. Another thing that will help you to exercise, to have an exercise body. I'm looking for one now. How's <laughs> in, in your family? Because sometimes, ah, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't really do not want to go. But if I have somebody, I tell my daughter, I said, but she's always working. If I have somebody that can go with me, then we are holding each other accountable, right? So find a family member, find a friend that you can walk out together. That makes it, you say, no friend, can we go for a walk? I actually have a man that lives around me here that I ask, you know, when you're going to walk, please call me so that I can go with you. Because sometimes I'm lazy, I don't want to do it. But if he goes and knocks at my door, say, hey, you told me to call you, we are going, can you go? Then you'll be forced and encouraged to do that. So find a, an exercise body that you can exercise with. Every step you take counts. Every sweat, every sweat drop matters. Even moving around your home, walking on your street, everything you do helps you live longer. Remember what that Harvard University said that when you are exercising, that the cancer cells, that the angiogenesis, that blood vessels start to die. So I don't know if anybody has a, I'm gonna go to the next one. We yes, talked about the yes. experience of exercise. You know, when we do chemo, people don't know. Most of the time, people don't die from cancer itself. They die from heart cardiovascular disease because the chemo is toxic. It has cardiovascular toxicity that is associated with chemo. So exercise, they've shown that helps your heart to be in good shape. So if you have chemo, please, you need to exercise. Them. So that I have a client that um, <clears throat> was going through chemo and I was telling her things she need to do uh, uh, so that her heart can stay healthy and she wasn't listening. And one day she called me in the middle of the night. Guess what? Her heart was failing. The chemo that they gave her now has damaged her heart. They had to put her on ICU and all that stuff. But when she came out, I told her, I told you so. You have to do these things to keep your heart healthy because chemo is so strong that it hurts your heart. It damages some of them, not all of them. Some of them will damage heart. So doing this exercise will help us prevent that from happening. And again, you know that some of the chemotherapy or whatever medication that it he, 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 he he, he kind of hurts our bone density, our bone density. So doing this exercise, especially like resistant training, you know, I tell people, take a bottle of uh, uh, pure water, big one, and just use it and do one, you just move in your hands, you know, put them on your leg, move your leg, just resistant exercise, resistant exercise, using weight. You don't have to go to the gym and lift the big weight. You can use little weight, frozen water, take a bottle of water and use it and do, you know, I'm lifting. 10 here, 10 here, do 30. That is building your bone density. So we know that as, uh, chemo and radiation also affects our bone density. That's why they give many people shots to keep their bone strong. So aim at doing this uh, 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 resistant training three times a week. Use that water. And they sell ankle band, uh, like weight, half a pound weight. You can put it on your, tie it to your leg. So when you go to the, to the gym or when you go for a walk, tie it on your leg. That will help give you resistance so that your bones are getting stronger. So, you know, they have yoga here. I don't know if they have yoga 
in Nigeria. They have Tai Chi, all those things, all those yoga, all those things help with you know, flexibility and balance. We know that some of the chemo are toxic to the body. So these things will help us stay healthy. Again, if you feel weak, listen to your body, but don't stop. You have to get up and move. Even if <laughs> there are some days that I'm so tired, I'm not feeling well, and I push myself, I push myself. Again, this is safe, safe, safe exercise. We're not telling you to go carry 50 pounds. Just go for a walk, walk it out, and you will feel better. So that's, that's, I don't want to say more on exercise. If anybody have any questions or else, I'll continue. Laura. Okay. I, I think uh, Ryan had a question. Um, Ryan, you can unmute yourself. Someone said that she sounds familiar. <laughs> okay. Hi, hi everybody. Hello. Uh, thank you. Thank you for letting me join you. And uh, thank you for everybody that's come on. I uh, just wanted to reiterate a little about uh, exercise. If you don't, use it you will lose it hmm. if you don't use it you will lose it um yeah. i was in, i was in a hospital for 88 days on my back and i lost my movement of my foot i could i had to come home i had to walk i couldn't walk to the bathroom and every day i just kept pushing then it was because I had COVID. Yeah, that was and COVID. COVID almost killed him, not cancer, COVID. <laughs> yeah. And it, it ate a third of my lung away. Uh, but I just kept pushing a little bit more every day. That's despite the cancer that I had before, which was 20 years ago, which I'm free, cancer free. Um, but if you don't use it, you lose it. I came home in a wheelchair. I started to do, if I could. It's kind of emotional for me. If I, I got, to, if I could stand at my sink for two minutes, I was happy. Mm -hmm. That's how low I was. I was in a wheelchair and oxygen. My oxygen was 78, but little bit by little bit. I just kept pushing through. Yes. And today I'm walking, I'm walking four or five miles a day. I can walk. Yeah. So no matter how low you are, if you look up, there's help there for you. Don't get depressed. Don't get down on yourself. Why me? Find something to find thankful and joy in. Whether it's the sun coming up, whether it's a bird outside your window. There's always somebody that has it worse off than you. Yes. And so yes. I just encourage you with that. Just whatever you can do, just do. And a little bit more, be thankful for that little bit more you can do every day. Yeah. Because it'll yeah. come, it'll come and healing in your life. And uh, it's yeah. great to have a coach. It's great to have a coach and it's great to have one another, family, friends that we can rely on when we go. We need that when we go through cancer, when we go through sickness, when we go through disease, we're there together for you. And that's all I have to say. And thank you for letting me join this morning. Yeah, let thank me you. let me say something here. You know, when Ryan, <laughs> we, we, we are good, cancer, we, we beat cancer, we put cancer where it needs to do, where it needs to be. And let me say something again, the goal, you see people living with cancer. People can live with cancer. You put cancer at bay, you shut it down, and you live your life. That's mm -hmm. the goal sometimes. Sometimes you don't get rid of it completely, but because people who have blood pressure, sometimes they have their blood pressure and they live another 70 years. So if we can get cancer where it will not kill the person, shut it down and live your life. That's why I like uh, your, your slogan, I have cancer, so what? So you have cancer, so what? Let's get it to sleep. Let's shut it down and live your life. Now, Ryan had, he had uh, COVID and he was in the hospital for 88 days, 88, 88. It was the grace of God that kept him, that saved him because they told me he wouldn't make it, but God, but God saved him. He's talking about lose it, uh, use it or lose it. 
when he, when he was able to get out of bed, he couldn't walk. He had to learn every day how to walk, how to, today I can't even, you know, he goes for a walk at 4 a.m. in the morning. He's walking, walking, even in the cold with snow and everything. So if you don't use your muscles, you're gonna lose it. That's what he's saying. Thank you, Ryan, for that. That's really good. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And something that really touched me is like, if there is always someone who is worse off. So if you think your case is the worst, I think there is also someone who is having a bad day, whose is illness is even 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 worse than yours. So just be grateful. And that makes a lot of sense. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that. Any comments, any questions? Um, our time is fast spent, but I'm going to allow Ms. Sogana to go through everything she had. Um, this is recorded. If you have to leave, please uh, be here. Also, there is uh, ah, something I, I nearly forgot to. She gave us a gift, and I'm going to talk about it now, and the team the team will drop it in the chat. Um, she gave us an ebook, um, a free ebook that everyone can download. I don't know how generous, in fact, that's a lot of um, generosity that she's sharing with us. The ebook is around seven things in your house that causes cancer. Seven things in your house that causes cancer. The team will drop the link in the chat. Please use the link and download the e-copy. Please ensure that you are not using it for anything other than just reading, absorbing, and using it in the house. You cannot sell. You cannot uh, use it commercially. This is a gift from someone who wants us to live a healthier life. Please, um, that's a gift from her to everyone who joined the call. And I'm super, super glad. Please, let's appreciate her with an emoji or a thank you or whatever in the chat. Um, it's not easy to give out your book, no matter how small it is to everyone to download free. Please use the link in the chat, download the um, the uh, ebook. The ebook is on seven things you can do, seven things in your house that causes cancer. There are lots of things, aside the things that we eat, there are things in the house um, that causes cancer. So uh, the link has been shared by the team. Please copy the link, put it somewhere. If you cannot uh, download it, it has been shared on yours. Uh, please um, just copy it, paste it in uh, um, like any, maybe a WhatsApp letter you can download while you are still listening. Thank you, everyone. We have two hands up and I'm going to give them, please briefly, because our time is fast spent, uh, briefly share or ask your questions. The first person is Sunny Gladys. Please, Sunny, unmute yourself and go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Sunny, please unmute yourself. Click on the um, uh, microphone button. Okay, why she's trying to do so? Please, can we have Busola? Busola's hand is up as well. Busola, can you unmute and share? Okay, um, I think they are trying to share. Doris, if you're, if you can unmute yourself and speak uh, while we are getting, sorry, okay, Busola is, this yeah, Busola is. Sorry, okay, I on. joined in late. I just wanted the can you just recap? Can we just have a recap on what you have discussed? I joined in when you were talking about exercising. Can we just have oh, a recap? Okay, because of our time, uh, we may not have to go through all that. And, um, but then the recording will be shared um if you follow us or you, you can just follow the link the recording will be shared on youtube and the one of last week is a continuation from last week the recording will be shared and she's as she's sharing she can also like touch some things but we can't really do a recap because our time is fast spent this recording and the one of last week will be shared on all our platforms and you can go there and listen there are lots of things that she shared um so we we'll have to allow people um to share all right um we have doris doris can you please unmute now if you want to share doris are you there all right while we are waiting for doris i'm going to read something in the chat someone says um please i'm joining for the first time welcome welcome glad to have you here 
my 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 mom is suffering from breast cancer and she has been nursing the wound on her breast for over a year i stay far away from her but got to visit her today and i observed the wound has spread towards her armpits hmm. she, she takes regular treatment including chemotherapy sessions please can you say something on this um Ogana, do you have anything to share so first of all what kind of um has she been diagnosed what kind of breast cancer does she have uh how is she getting chemo what is the treatment plan do they plan to do surgery are they doing radiation what is the treatment plan you know before i could say anything uh, she has breast cancer and when the wound is like that has it spread uh in the body did they do they know where what stage of cancer is that um our advice first and foremost is to do what we've been teaching here uh your mother has to change her diet that's the one if she has to change her diet and start doing what we what we talked about here and again so you everybody knows we have a program because there's so much to share and there's no way yeah. i can share yeah. all that here so if you want uh, uh you can contact us through flora or through our website and then we can also help you uh to because like my husband said you need a coach you need somebody that can hold your hand and keep you accountable because sometimes you want to do these things and you don't do them you need someone that will, that will call you and say hey have you done this have you done that concerning your mother let her start changing her diet juicing drinking copious amount of greens every day every day you know doing everything we talked about then let's see what treatment you know you can contact me after this let's see what treatment is getting let's see what other things we can do to help boost our immune system because like i said it's the immune system that will fight the cancer and you guys know that when you get chemo it kills the good and the bad cells chemo depresses your immune system so you need to we need to come alongside and push your immune system so that you can fight harder and stronger and that wound need to be looked at by a doctor like I can't really help your mother, but if you can listen to what we shared last week and start doing it, and if you need to contact me, do that, and then we can help. You need to start. What's she eating? Like if I ask you, what did your mother eat this morning? Did she get today? Yesterday? Did she get six cups of green yesterday? If she didn't, then healing is difficult. You have to bombard the body. This is not normal. You can't be normal. Cancer is crazy, so you have to go crazy. You have to bombard the, the body with copious tons and tons of nutrients, tons and tons of nutrients, so that you can slow the, the, the cancer from growing. The goal is to stop that thing from growing, because when it grows, it kills the person. It takes over the whole person. So that's what I would say about that. It's difficult to say anything about your mother, because I don't know what breast cancer she has. I don't know what treatment she's getting. But start with food. Make sure she drinks at least six cups of green vegetable every day. Start with that. And stop meat, beans, 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 vegetable, vegetable, plantain, all those. Give them real food as she's going through treatment. So you can contact us. You can come and work with us so we can help you dial in. We have to dial in the treatment and see what the doctors and I, i'm even in a position to, to call the oncologist and ask them what are you giving this person and they have done that over and over and i'll talk to the oncologist that's right. the answer i have there thank you so much thank you so much um the person put in the chat understood ma thank you i will reach out please reach out to her um you can reach out to me to get her contact um she can help you you know put together some of the things that um you need organa you can also share your contact in the chat um if that will help maybe your email address or or a phone number whatever it is um so that people can get you directly if they need anything directly from you um it's like she said and i love it i'm going to put it in the chat in my status cancer is crazy so you have to be crazy to fight it really um so some of but when i was diagnosed with cancer and i go about doing my business go dancing and play at work one of our board members will say flora, flora you um 
cancer met the wrong person <laughs> because I, I know send cancer. So I kept saying cancer met the wrong person. So please be that wrong person that cancer met. Don't let it take you. Rather fight. Keep fighting. All right. Thank you, everyone. Sunny Gladys, if you can still unmute, our time is fast spent. But if you can still unmute and share, that would be good. Um, Sunny Gladys, are you there? Okay, someone said, Flora, how do I contact you? Um, please, the team, please share my contact in the chat. Um, and the team shared my contact in the chat. Um, our email address could go there. Administrator's email address can also go there. Okay, see, Ogohenes' um, email is here. Um, so you can also reach out to administrator. Okay, his number is on the chat. Yes. Um, once you reach out through this number, you will get us. Ogonna's email is also here. If you want to reach out to her, please also reach out to me. Okay, the website is robusthealth.com. Um, please go there. Lots of information. I've gone there myself. Lots of information. We need information to heal. Like I said, a few days ago, I had to plant 11 different green vegetables in my house because I need to start juicing. In fact, she told me to snap my juice and send to her. Um, so that she will know the kind of juicing I'm using. So please, um, we have to fight. It's because of what we did last week, um, all she shared last week. And I, this week I said, I'm going to plant everywhere in my compound now is uh, green vegetables. I, I'm not even enjoying the menu from the pig food that is uh, coming uh, everywhere, but we need to be, be crazy to be able to fight cancer. All right. Um, I think there is no hand up. I'm gonna please go ahead. Everyone okay. has spoken. So the, one of the last things I'll talk about is sleep. We talked about that already, but we're gonna talk a little bit. So sleep is important. Like I said, all these things they work hand in hand, man. If you don't sleep well, then you have stress. And if you have stress, we talked about what stress can do to your body. So you need to get that sleep. They said that sleep is where healing happens. Sleeping is where the healing. Do you know that when you sleep, that's when your body detoxifies. Do you know that at 2 a.m. every day, your body will dump all the junk, all the, uh, uh, the bile, all the waste. It will dump it. Your lymphatic system and your liver will dump the bile and the waste at 2 a.m. every day. You need to get that sleep. If you are up watching Netflix by 2 a.m. in the morning, you are doing your body a disservice. You're not going to heal well. You need to shut that TV and go and get your sleep. Our body repairs and regenerates while we sleep. Sleep is paramount. You have to sleep is medicine also. Like I said, these things, you have to do the food. You have to do the de detoxification. You have to do the exercise. You have to do the, the mindset, changing your mindset, the stress management. You have to do all this. When you are not sleeping, <laughs> things go crazy. One thing I don't do well is going without sleep. When I don't sleep well, I'm a mess the next day. I can't function. I feel like butterflies in my brain, like singing in there. Nothing works. When you don't get enough quality of sleep, the same story, your body will dump cortisol. You all know what cortisol will do, the bad stress hormone. The same story. And cortisol will depress your immune system. And your immune system is what you need to fight this craziness. You need your immune system. And again, what is all we make the fat pile up on your organs, pile up on your stomach. You don't need that. What is all we increase your sugar? And guess what? Cancer loves sugar. You don't want your sugar to be high. That doesn't mm. mean you are, you, are, you are diabetic. We call it insulin resistant. When you are eating all this food, eating and eating carbohydrate that is not healthy for you, you become insulin resistant. I tell people they have to check their A1C. When I get a client, I tell them, I want to know what your A1C is. Because when I do that lab, I find out what their insulin has been doing. So when you have all that, and all that is sleeping from having stress. You see, somebody said the worst thing, you, one of the unhealthiest thing you can do to yourself is not to get enough sleep. Because when you don't sleep, it impacts every major organ, your brain, your heart. It impacts your immune system. 
So we need to get sleep. When you don't sleep, it suppresses your immune system. We talked about that. I can't go through that again. It increases the stress level, you know, in your body. One thing that I need to mention about sleep, poor sleep will affect another hormone called melatonin. People hear about melatonin. Melatonin in your body will help you know when to wake up and when to go to sleep. Melatonin is produced via pineal gland in the brain. Melatonin is what controls our circadian red rhythm by when do you sleep and when do you get up. But that's not the most important thing melatonin does. Like melatonin is gold, <laughs> it's gold. Melatonin is not just a sleep inducing hormone, it's not just that. Melatonin is an antioxidant. You know, antioxidant is to, it's a good stuff that stops the oxidation that causes cancer. So melatonin will stop cancer cells from growing. Melatonin is also anti-inflammatory. We're talking about inflammation that causes cancer. So when you don't sleep, your melatonin is low. We don't want that. To fight this craziness, you have to sleep. So what are the tips? I'll give you the tips. Don't drink caffeine, don't drink alcohol before bed, right? That will stop you from sleeping. Sleep in complete darkness. I was talking to myself yesterday. I tell people in America, make sure your air condition is on, that your room is 69 degrees. <laughs> we don't even have light all the time in Nigeria. But try as much as possible to make sure your room is cold at night so that you can sleep well. Turn off your phone, your TV, all those things, laptop, whatever. Turn it off an hour before bedtime. We call it the blue light. If you look at those things before you sleep, you, your sleep might be disturbed. Go outside in the morning and get sunlight. It's more for Americans. You guys get sunlight every day there. Um, avoid, don't exercise at night though. Exercise is good, but don't do it at night because it might keep you awake. awake. You see, I told you about breathing technique. I said about, it's called 478. You take a breath. You take a deep breath and count to four, and count for four seconds. One, two, three, four. Then you hold your breath and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you breathe out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, seven, eight. If you can sleep, do that. This breathing technique I just talked about. Do it, do it, and do it maybe 15 times. By the time you get to 15 times, I, I do this every day. I do it to calm myself down. I do it to bring healing to my body, and it also helps for sleep. So what we are doing here, you know, you are, you are a cancer doctor, your oncologist will give you treatment plan. It tells you what chemo they're going to use. It tells you what medicine they're going to give you if you have heart, heart, heart problem, if you have uh, diabetes. They tell you all that. But none of them will give you recovery and prevention plan. They don't give you recovery. They just give you treatment plan. They don't give you recovery and, and, and prevention plan. And that's what we are doing. My program is to give you plan how to recover and plan how to prevent all these diseases from coming back. Yeah, the doctor will give you your treatment plan, but they don't give you what you have to do every day at home so that this cancer will not come back. They don't give you what you have to do every day at home so that, so that the diabetes will go away or the high blood pressure. So the last thing I'm going to talk about here is detoxification. Detoxification. When people hear about detoxification, excuse me, they think of uh, going to drink this, going to drink that, going to drink that. The first thing I tell people about detoxification is stop toxification. I don't know if toxification is a word, but I made that word up. Stop toxification. Stop putting toxins in your body. In Nigeria, we are using bleaching cream. We are using all this cream. We are washing our body. What happened to what our forefathers did? Our forefathers washed their body with black soap, African soap. That's what I use in America. Let's go back to our roots. Let's go back to what our forefathers do, did. They didn't put on all this cream and makeup. Do you know that makeup, I have to find a makeup that doesn't have toxins. Because toxins will make any disease worse. I don't care what disease you have. So relax that. All these things. Toothpaste. I have to change everything. 
Rome was not built in a day. You cannot do that all day. But that's one of the first things I tell my clients to do. What soap are you washing yourself with? What makeup are you using? Are you, are you putting relax on your head? Are you uh, coloring your head? Your hair. What pot are you cooking with? Because the pot we cook with matters also. Because there's so much toxin in the pot that we use. So I remember growing up, they used to cook with clay, clay pot. Man, those people knew what was up. I'm looking for someone to give me clay pot now. I'll cook with it, though. Because there's no toxin in the clay pot. I remember they stored their water. They don't have refrigeration. So they go near a tree and they dig a little hole and they put a clay, big clay, clay pot and fill it with water. That's how the water is kept cold. It, it, today, plastic is killing us. Do you know the plastic? Everything in Nigeria is in plastic. That plastic is very toxic to the body. So look at perfume. <laughs> People spray perfume. You don't need perfume. Perfumes filled with cancer causing, perfume has chemical that causes cancer in the body. The fragrance, you know, look at what you are cleaning your house with, all the shell talks we are spraying, all these things are causing the cancer and other diseases. Remember, this is for every disease. How many times do you poop a day? <laughs> it's important. If you want to detoxify yourself, you make sure you are going to the bathroom at least two times a day. I speak to somebody who said, oh, I go once a week. I'm like, holy cow, do you know what that means? Your body is absorbing all the toxic chemicals, all the junk, all the infection, everything back into your body. So if you are drinking every day, all these things I'm saying, you know, you should be pooping every day. <laughs> pooping two times a day is not going to be a problem because you are getting six cups of vegetable into your body there's no magic pill to detox detox is what you do every day and to let you know that toxins causes cancer toxin has been proven by world health organization that is causing cancer if we can i remember when they used to braid hair do you remember in those days you do a cold bridge you guys are too young laura you guys are too young when they, were, <laughs> they do a cold, a cold bridge they have different kinds of styles they do what happened now everybody wants to bleach their hair everybody wants to do this and you see under here that's why i'm wearing wig because i do not put any chemical in my hair at all and i wear my natural hair except when i'm on tv or radio or whatever so detoxification is very important and as we're talking about detoxification we're talking about of mental detoxification too i call it the quantum quantum detox and that's where all the things we are talking about forgiveness you know all those saying bye bye to negativism changing your confession clean up your emotional closet you have a closet full of emotional junk clean it up and we have talked about that so detoxification is important. You can't heal until you started. I mean, you can be healing, but don't stop your healing because of all the chemical that you are putting on your skin, all the chemical you are putting on your hair, all the chemicals you are cleaning your house with, all the chemicals you are eating. We talked about all the toxins in the food. Okay, uh, Flora, I'll let you. Thank you so much. Uh, like we are 30 minutes behind our plan. And um, uh, I don't know if we have any questions. The link is still in the chat. If you want to download um, the ebook, e please download it and read it and make use of the information. Sometimes the problem we have is that we take it lots of information. Working on them is difficult. I know it is difficult. I know sometimes it's like changing a lifestyle that you've built over the years, but you start small. You start small, small by small. That's what Mr. Ryan said to us. Start gradually. Every minute, build something, do something. It's not going to, Rome wasn't built in a day. You have to gradually make all those changes. And um, I think we can call it a night um, if we do not have any questions or comments. But if we do, I can. I need to see some hands up. 
if not we we'll need to wrap up and i'll give them um, mr gonna some time to just wrap up there are lots of information um that you can get from her website you can reach out to her as well to help you structure a, a, a very good plan for your healing cancer it's something that you need to like intentionally go through to be able to heal laughter play love everything that you need to bring to the table to be able to heal cancer it's it, it, it's not magic it's, it's something that nature has given to us and we must use it um i'm still asking if there's any comment um any hands up busola your hand is still up i don't know if it's the former one or is a new one but then like i mentioned the recording will be on our youtube channel or linkedin platform um, all our WhatsApp, uh, what do you call it now, uh, social media, um, Instagram and Facebook, you can get the recording from there and please share with other people. It's not just about cancer, every other chronic disease, every other disease. There's something she said about if diabetes, people are talking about it and they are not ashamed of diabetes or hypertension. Why are you ashamed of cancer and why are you hiding it? I don't know. I keep saying this, but anyway um we'll keep we'll keep talking about it there is a lot we, we we are growing and we are getting to a point where people are coming up to say yes i got this and it's going to help um to make things better um we are going to have this the next section um next week no not next week next month um so we usually have it on second and third thursdays of every month so for may we are going to have it on the eighth and the 15th or the team can just make their changes um based on the person coming on board um and then we can disseminate the information but before we go i'm going to ask mr gunner to um please round off with and just give us finals um things that we need to do to be able to lead a healthier life thank you so much ma for joining us it's been two days please can we appreciate our two sessions just to share free of charge all these things i told you people that we pay her too much money if you have to do her program but she gave us all these things for free and to be honest um her generosity is 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 mind-blowing thank you so much ma'am um your final words please okay so anyways um <clears throat> like i said the most important thing is that we want to put cancer like I, I said before, cancer is crazy. And you can't fight. When you are fighting with the enemy that is coming to take your life, you're not going to be, ah, uh, no, you're going to punch, punch to win, you know, kick, kick it, do whatever it needs, throw everything you have at it. If somebody, my people used to say in Igbo, if somebody is trying to, how do you say, bite you in the hair without afraid of uh, your hair, and they want to bite. If you're going to bite them down <laughs> where they poop, you're not going to be afraid to bite them there either. So mm -hmm, if cancer mm -hmm. is coming to fight you, to take your life, man, you're going to, this is something you have to do with all persistency, discipline. You have to be disciplined. It's not something I do. Oh, I'm talking to myself too. I have to be disciplined. Like I haven't juice today. I have to go juice. I have to drink it all. You know, it's not magic. You have to discipline yourself. We talked about food. Please, food is the number one medicine. If the food you are eating, if you are eating too much rice, uh, too much meat, please cut down. Because as I told you in the beginning, meat has been found. I mean, meat, animal protein, fish, all those things. It has been found to have what is called IGF-1, insulin growth factor one, which is known to make cancer grow. And every disease it is made, it, they say that 33% of people who have diabetes, that this insulin growth factor will make the diabetes worse. So if you can cut down, and if you want to eat meat, please get the, the chicken that's running around, you know, the old way they grow chicken. Get that one, the old chicken, the Nigerian Igbo chicken. Get the, the chicken and then fish not point and kill not the one that was grown in somebody's backyard you don't know what they put you don't know what they feed get the fish that's caught in the river that kind of fish and eat a little just two ounces just half of my hand a week i, I tell people put if you can't do without just put a little on your food so you you don't feel deprived 
And when you get well, then you can take a little more. But in the meantime, you need to heal. Then we talked about juicing. Please juice. Green, you guys are blessed. You have greens. Buy ugu, kale, whatever, and juice, and blend, 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 blend. Drink, drink, drink. I tell people drink every hour. Then, you know, uh, uh, we talked about uh, 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 exercise. We talked, please, somebody was asking to recap. You don't need to run a marathon. You just need to get up and walk at least 30 minutes a day. Go out on the street. You have beautiful weather. Here, we had winter. I couldn't go outside and walk and enjoy the sunlight for six months. You guys have beautiful weather all year round. Go out there, walk. Instead of going anywhere, walk. You know, you know. now I see my neighbor, my neighbor walking around with no shoes. I'm like, huh? So I started to research. Do you know when you, when you walk on, on, on sand, the God puts what is called ions, ions in your body. It heals the body. I heard that. In the olden days, people walk around with no shoes and they were looking at them. You know, get out there and, and dance. Go out there, dance in the church. They know me in the church. When I come to church, it's dancing time. I, I don't care who is looking at me. I just go off and I dance and I dance until I drop. You know, go singing, sing praises, do whatever. You know, do all those things that we talked about. And please, cortisone, cortisone, sugar, insulin resistant is what's killing us. And we talked about stress, how it does that. We talked about how uh, chemicals, stop putting chemicals in your body. Chemicals will cause insulin resistance. It goes in and messes up your whole body. So there are so many things you can do to stop from getting the cancer in the first place. We need to stop getting cancer in the first place. If you do these things, eating the right food, exercising, detoxification, uh, uh, all those things I talked about, you're gonna stop yourself from getting cancer. First and foremost, we don't wanna get this evil thing. Then if you get it, you can fight it. Fighting it is possible. Change your mindset. Instead of confessing negative, why me, why me, oh my God, why me? Say, Father, I thank you. You're gonna give me a way of escape. Yes, There's a way of escape here. Yes. So, um, thank you, has, thank has, you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, it's a few minutes to six, and then we've spent lots of lots of time here. And the final thing I will say um, is good to hear, but it's also good to do. And it takes a lot of discipline for us to get to a point of doing. Start small and move forward. Um, our contact is in the chat. Her own contact is in the chat. If you get tired, call me. Um, it's if, you, if you if you need a walking body, call me. We might not be in the same state, but we can get up at the same time. We will time ourselves. Our technology has made things easier. That's and true. and if you if you follow me on on my status, you know that I do at least ten thousand steps every day. Today I did fifteen thousand steps. At least two hours every day I must work. Um, some days I also add running, jogging dancing ah, people people in my estate they know that that's the one crazy woman that is always uh listening to there's one woman she does i love her praises i'll put it in my ear i'll be dancing on the street it's good that you're even looking at me it makes me even happy and gets me popular so be, don't be crazy like you need to be crazy about your healing so if you need a dancing body or you need a walking body reach out let's do this thing together for cancer, we must fight. And I appreciate everybody on this call today. Thank you so much, Mrs. Ogonna Hennes, for giving us two days of your time. We, we are not taking it for granted. God bless you. And to your husband, he's been with us. It's nothing like supportive family. Oh, Jesus Christy. Anyway, let me not say anything, but there is nothing like having a husband who supports you. Nothing stops him from not being here today. He can decide to be sleeping, but he's been here sharing with us, giving us example in an emotional state. That's all we need. So everybody, please, let's continue to do our best to grow together. Reach out if you need support. Reach out if you need support. We can do this. We can do this. And having said that, and I wish you 
Um, okay, for those who are in America, Canada, you see, have your day. So I wish you a good day. For those in Nigeria and, and the other African countries, I wish you a good evening. Have a good sleep. Please sleep. Please sleep. The worries will not um, solve itself when you are awake. Sleep and everything will take care of itself. Thank you, everyone, for joining us again. And this is I've Got Cancer. So what? Thank you so much, Judith, and for joining us. Yes, thank you so much. And, and God bless you. Um, please share our contact, share the links um, to the YouTube people. Everyone should just listen in and live a healthier life, please. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a good evening. Bye for now. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for having me. Thank and, you. you know, this is doable. Don't be afraid. Yes. You know, you can win this war. It's a war. We're fighting it. So do, yes. do what you need. And if you need help, we are here to help you to win yes. that war. So don't be afraid and don't hide it. I'm, I'm surprised I'm hearing from Florida. People are hiding that they have cancer. I know everybody hide, is hiding. Everybody oh just God. few of us are coming out. Every other person is hiding. In fact, okay. when I came out, they said that I'm crazy, that I should go and, 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 and go and uh, uh, hide it. Do I want to marry? Do I want to get another job and all that? Waiting concern me, concern my issue. All we are talking about is get healed. People that will love you will love you despite your health. So, yes. yeah. Yeah. So, we, well, I'm, I'm, I'm here to um, help in any way I can to make yes. people understand, you know, I will be uh, uh, coming out in different places in Nigeria, even though I'm in America, to share, to encourage people that do not hide from this. This is curable. You know, somebody said it's a stigma. It's so sad in Nigeria. Well, you know, we, we need to change how people perceive this. We need to, by speaking out, thank you, Flora, for doing this. And anywhere you can, you want me to come and speak or anything, I will, to bring awareness that it's okay. You know, because if you hide it, then the person going to die without help. They wouldn't know what they don't know. People don't know what they don't know. So anything that I can do to create awareness, very soon I will be doing like TV interviews so that I will yes. create awareness yes. so that people will know yes. that yes. what stigma, nonsense. How about their blood pressure? How about their diabetes? <laughs> you know? Anyway, let me not keep you there. I'm excited. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, yeah. and have a good evening. Bye for All now. Right. Thank Bye. you, Judith. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Yeah. And God bless your day. Please heal and be disciplined. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Doris.